Well, we've certainly enjoyed our time here at the Verbo Citrus Bowl. Uh, I'd like to thank all the bowl uh, folks who work so hard probably, you know, for the entire year to make this happen for us, uh, especially, you know, Steve Hogan, Hogan uh, who we've known for a long time and is a good friend who uh, does great things for the community uh, with this bowl game, which we certainly appreciate. You know, the city of Orlando is a fantastic place that our players have really enjoyed, our staff has really enjoyed, and we appreciate your hospitality. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our team uh, to play a, a, an iconic traditional program like the University of Michigan. Um, you know, Coach Harbaugh and his staff have done an outstanding job with their team and uh, had a great season and certainly going to be a, a challenge for our team um, to be able to compete, you know, against them. Uh, we have a lot of respect for uh, what they've been able to accomplish. They certainly played, I think, some of their best football toward the end of the season. So, um, you know, our team has uh, practiced and had a good attitude about uh, the opportunity that we have here. Um, and. I've been pleased with the way a lot of our young players have had the opportunity to improve. Um, as you know, we have several players missing, but I think this has been a, a real blessing for a lot of our other players to be able to improve and grow um, for this really significant challenge that we have in this game you know, tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to also thank our fans and our coaches and all the staff that we have at the University of Michigan who work so hard year-round to um, create an opportunity for our players to have a better chance to be successful in life, uh, whether it's in personal development, academic support, or, you know, as football players. So, uh, again, thank you for your hospitality, and we appreciate the opportunity. Coach Harbaugh. Yeah, I echo uh, many of the same sentiments as Coach Saban. This has been an outstanding week, um, tremendous opportunity for our football program. Um, City of Orlando is a great place. Uh, had a chance to spend a lot of time here uh, in, in my younger days. Uh, even lived out, lived in Orlando for a few years. Uh, but just the amount of activities, the things uh, you know that our our players and our staff and our uh, wives of our coaches, kids. You know they. Uh, Many of our coaches have kids. Many of our staff have kids. I mean, you can't ask for a better place to come than than uh, Orlando. So, um, so many things. Uh, you know, you just feel like you you get to check off the the old bucket list uh, as it relates to our 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 team and our our families. Uh, and then, you know, when this game was you know arranged, uh, you know, there's a just a lot of excitement to play an iconic program. Uh, like Alabama. Uh, Coach Saban, his staff have really set the bar. Uh, lead program, great football team. Uh, and it's a big challenge for us, uh, but a, a great opportunity uh, for our season, for this 2019 season. Uh, and I feel good now that the, the game's getting close to kickoff. You know, it's been a a lot of preparation has gone into to this game. Our team's been hard at it. Um, great facilities to, to practice here uh, over at West Orange High School. We've really appreciated that. We've appreciated Steve Hogan uh, and what he's done for this game. It's a first class, first class game, and we're proud to be a part of it. Um, I want to thank our, our staff, our, um, our coaches, uh, coaches' wives, coaches' families, uh, who put a lot of work into to this season and to get our football team to to where it's at right now and um, also our strength staff so many good things that they've they've taught our players our academic support staff our trainers uh, our, 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 our PR Dave Avloff uh, our equipment manager Gary Hazlett's done an amazing job uh, everything is is flowed very well uh, coming into this game and every everything that everybody is has taught and learned our players. Uh, it's been a been a fabulous um, experience to be here, and now let's we're ready to play the game. Uh, we uh, we're fired up to play. We're ready to go, and uh, uh, kickoff approaches, and uh, tremendous opportunity for our team.
All right, we'll open it up for questions. We'll start here on the second row, right? Just for Coach Saban, right? Um, Dylan Moses announced that he's going to come back next year. Just what advice did you give to him during that decision-making process, and, and what does that mean for your defense next year? Well, I think that, you know, we try to give um, the facts and the reality of every player's situation um, relative to the decision that they can make for them and their family. In Dylan's case, it was uh, because of his injury. You know, how was that going to affect his draft status? He didn't play all year long this year. Um, so, you know, he can create value by coming back, and we certainly have to, as an institution and an organization, make him feel comfortable uh, relative to how we insure him and what he can do so that hopefully, this, uh, you know, he's not going to have these kind of problems in the future and he'll be able to improve his draft status. And I, I think that the big thing with Dylan was um, he wanted to be a part of the team. You know, he wanted to be a leader of the team. He wanted to come back and play well for Alabama. And that, that was uh, probably the deciding factor for him. And obviously, he's a great player. He's a good person and a good leader. And uh, he can make a significant impact on making us better next year. Go across the aisle on the left. Kyle Nash, Blue HQ Media. This is a bit of a question for both you guys, but we'll start with Coach Harbaugh. Um, Coach, when you look at the film, obviously you've had the week leading up and a little before uh, to get prepared for the game. When you look at the film, what comes off the screen when you're checking out the Alabama program? A lot of, a lot of, a lot of really good things. Um, you know, offensively, uh, and I'll let Coach Saban, you know, talk about his own team, but, uh, you know, he's got a lot of great, great things to talk about uh, schematically and, and uh, players. Um, you know, uh, offense that is, you know, built for speed and uh, attacks you, talk, attacks every every part of the field uh, in the passing game, in the running game, uh, you know, physical, physical uh, football team and uh, defensively, uh, you know, really the same, same thing. It's a, a, a very attacking, uh, multiple in coverages uh, and the special teams is, is uh, really dangerous, especially in the return game. Uh, the punt return, the kickoff return, uh, and all facets, it's, everything's, uh, everything's tight, everything is battened down, and um, you know, it's, there are no weaknesses. Same to you, um, but for uh, Michigan, what comes off the uh, screen when you're checking out the film? Well, I think the first thing that comes off the screen to me is they're a very well-coached team in every phase of the game. Uh, their players play really, really hard. They play with tremendous toughness. They've got great intangibles in terms of, you know, their discipline, their accountability to do their job, how they play together as a group. Um, you know, on defense, you know, they do a lot of movement. They've got a lot of quickness. They're very aggressive. Um, a lot of multiples in terms of what you see and uh, how it challenges your offensive line and the coverage aspects of what the quarterback has to read and receivers have to adjust to. and. You know, on offense, they have a lot of the multiples that, you know, a lot of college teams have now in terms of how they attack the entire field. Uh, they can run the ball effectively. The offensive line is really, really good. Uh, quarterback plays well, can make all the throws, and they've got good skill guys that can make explosive plays. So they've got great balance on offense, and uh, they're very physical on special teams and do a really, really good job, you know, in that area of the game as well. So uh, I, I see a team that is – um, very strong in every area, but I think the number one thing is they play with great intangibles and they're really well coached. Back across the aisle on the right, Christian. Yeah. Christian Brewer, WFTV. Coach Saban, where has Mac grown the most since taking over, and what does he have to do tomorrow for you to be successful? Well, I, I think the biggest thing with um, you know Matt is you know we try to get him to play within himself and just. You know, make the reads that you have to make. Don't force the ball. Take what the defense gives you and um, sort of try to use an ABC approach with them and uh, not make it too complicated. And uh, he's a very smart guy. Uh, he makes good choices and decisions when he plays within himself. And I think that's the number one thing that uh, we've seen Matt grow in. Um, and, you know, I think you can't really coach experience. You know, you have to kind of get that. And he's got some good experience. And a lot of it has been very good. And, you know, he, he's made a couple plays. I'm sure he wishes that he could have back. But I think he'll learn and grow from those things. 
staying on that same row, a little bit further to the right. Nick, uh, you're known as a defensive guy. I just wonder what you think of, of Don Brown from Michigan and, and sort of the way they play defense. I imagine you have an appreciation for that. Oh, yeah, they're very, very good and very challenging with the scheme that they have. And uh, I think the quickness and how aggressive they are and how they utilize their quickness on defense by stunting, gaming, uh, changing up the coverage multiples um, is very, very challenging. So a little different than maybe anybody that we've seen, you know, this year, but very, very effective. We're going over to the left middle. Coach Saban, Kerry Clark, BamaCentral.com. You mentioned last night and today as well that some young players have caught your eye during bowl practices. Could you share with us a couple of those names, please? Well, you know, I, you know me, I don't like to, you know, point people out and things like this. So uh, I just think in general some of our players that have played um, and gained experience throughout the year, I think this practice has been good from them understanding concepts better. I think sometimes what young players do is, you know, they try to memorize what they're supposed to do. They don't really understand the big picture very well. Um, and and I think it's very encouraging to their improvement when they do understand the big picture and the concept. So uh, they, they understand how uh, their accountability to do their job is very significant in the success of offense, defense, or whatever position they're playing. So this has been really good for a lot of our young players. Far left, up against the door. AP Stedham, WHEP, AM and FM, Foley, Alabama. Good morning, coaches. Uh, Coach Harbaugh, how has uh, Shea Patterson uh, developed since he arrived in Ann Arbor? And Coach Saban, what's been the change since the last time you faced off against him? Well, Shea's been, uh, been tremendous. He is a uh, – he's a – a great player, great competitor, and uh, he's been a tremendous teammate. He has just gotten better and better and better, and he came in really good. Uh, but I think once he, he got comfortable um, you know, with, his, with his teammates, with uh, the new system, um, you know, I think he just – you could just – you always saw the growth. You can always see the growth. He's, he's better today than he was yesterday, better tomorrow than he, than he was today. He's always had that, that mindset. He's um, – the competitive edge, I, I always, uh, you know, that just keeps coming back to me when I, when I talk about Shea or, or think about Shea. I mean, that's uh, it's humility with a competitive edge. Uh, and as Coach Coach Saban said, uh, Shea can make all the throws, um, and his accuracy has just gotten better and better. Uh, his understanding is is at a is at a very high level, and then um, he can run. He can. Uh, he can get out of the pocket. He can create plays. He can uh, uh, create space, and uh, he's he's effective both uh, as a runner and a thrower. Back over on the right, third row. Uh, oh, am sorry. I supposed to comment? Sorry, on coach. This? Yeah, I've not, we've known Shea for since he was a freshman in high school. I think you know he's one of those guys that came up with a great reputation and uh, was very effective in high school in Louisiana and Shreveport and. Um, you know, I thought he played well when he played at Ole Miss, uh, and I think he's got nothing but better as he's played at, at Michigan. But uh, I think he can make all the throws. He's very athletic. He can pull the ball and make you respect him on all the zone reads. Uh, but he can also extend plays and has made a lot of a lot of plays this year by extending plays, scrambling because he is athletic and a good player. And I just see a, a growth in the guy from – a maturity and experience standpoint. And, um, you know, I, I think he's playing in the system now where he's very well coached and he's done uh, a really good job for his team. I apologize for jumping the gun. We'll go over here now. Alex Bond, Montgomery Advertiser. Nick, um, you said last night on your radio show when the team, NFL teams you spoke to, only one of your players uh, had a top 15 grade. Were you surprised by that? And do you feel there's a concerted effort among the juniors to maybe come back and finish the deal look we have I think nine guys that are juniors that um, got evaluated by the junior committee um, and look our job is to give them the correct information um, so that they can make good decisions based on the reality of their status and um, you know we gave them that information some guys have first round grades uh, I'm not going to tell you they don't. Uh, and 
Uh, everybody's got to make a decision about what's best for their future. And, you know, we feel like our job is, is to make sure that we give them the correct information because there's a lot of misinformation, you know, out there, uh, whether it's mock drafts or um, who is the evaluator. And what we try to do is make sure we get the information from the actual people who draft. I know there's a lot of media guys out there and even you, but I'm not sure you draft anybody. Do you have a pick, you know, when the draft comes? So we, we try to get the information from the people who will actually pick the players, which is sometimes not um, congruent with what you all think. No disrespect to your ability to evaluate. <laughs> we'll stay on that same row on the right. James Ogletree, the Crimson White. To both coaches, how would you evaluate the play and the improvement of your offensive lines throughout this season? And what will it take in this game? What, what are the keys for them going against the opposing defensive front? Yeah, our offensive line uh, has been a real, real, uh, you know, shining light for our team. Uh, Ed Warner's done a tremendous job coaching the line. Uh, it's a veteran line. Uh, John Runyon, Brett, Ben Bredesen, uh, Cesar Rees, uh, Michael Wainu, uh played a lot of football. And uh, Jalen Mayfield, a redshirt freshman, has, has uh, stepped in at right tackle and, and done a fabulous job. Uh, you know, our tight ends are uh, you know, also very much involved in, in the running game and in the, the pass game. Uh, but the protection's been good, and it's going to really need to be this week. I mean, as, as you pointed out, I mean, uh, a defensive line that that uh, you know stunts, moves, uh, you know physically can set the edge and uh, physical linebacker play. Um, yeah, and our guys are excited about that. They're um, you know, it's a it's a challenge to them. It's a it's an opportunity to to show that they're good at football too. Um, but that's you know, that's uh, you know two opposing wills colliding, uh, and and uh, you know. I've told our guys, have at it. You know, this is uh, it's a big challenge, big staff. We definitely have tremendous respect for for our opponent in this game. Uh, but you know, take your best shot. We'll go over to the far left. Austin Meek with The Athletic. For both coaches, uh, you both have been around the game in a long time and I'm sure have followed each other's careers to some degree. Uh, if you had an opportunity to sit down for an hour and talk football, I'm curious if there's something that you would ask the other coach or some aspect of the other coach's philosophy or career that you find interesting. <laughs> well, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd be a real treat. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, there's, no, there's really nobody better. I have tremendous respect for Coach Saban. Well, you know, I, I've had the good fortune of having a lot of good mentors, you know, through the years, um, whether it was my college coach, Don James, or, um, you know, George Perlis at Michigan State in the time that I spent there with him, or, you know, Bill Belichick. Um, but I've always had a tremendous respect for Jim and his family as coaches. You know, his dad, Jack, was um, kind of came up with me. Um, I was a little younger. Uh, he was one of the most respected secondary coaches. That's what I coached. I used to try to visit with him as much as I could and uh, had a tremendous amount of respect for him. Tom Crean, who is um, Jim's brother-in-law, uh, his sister's married to Tom Cream, was an assistant basketball coach at Michigan State for Tom Izzo. So we've kind of had a tremendous amount of respect for the whole family, you know, as, as coaches. And Jim has obviously had a, a fabulous career in the NFL as well as college. And uh, I, I never, ever stop trying to learn. Uh, and I would certainly um, – cherish and have tremendous gratitude for the opportunity to be able to sit down with Jim and talk to him about how he does things and uh, how that could improve our organization. We're going to stay uh, in the pink, Megan. Brett Hudson, Tuscaloosa News. Coach Saban, I'm curious what you thought of Evan Neal's development over the course of the season, how you saw him improve. Uh, Evan Neal has done a really good job for us at left guard. Um, true freshman, 
Uh, I think that the fact that he plays, we have two tackles that are, are experienced guys and uh, pretty good players probably helped him. Um, Landon Dickerson also is a very experienced player playing center, so that probably helped him. Um, and I think he's going to get really, really challenged in this game because uh, complexity, multiple stunts, and, and uh, that their front is, is going to throw at us, is going to you know, challenge our entire offensive line. But I think the, 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 the guys that have the least experience will be challenged the most. And Evan has done a great job for us all year long, and we're really pleased with his progress. And I think he has a very bright future. Only have time for a couple more. We'll have first one over here on the right or on the left still. Robert Page, it's all about sports out of New Jersey. There's questions for both coaches. Uh, you've had a couple of weeks off or a few weeks off now. What is your preparation to keep the guys ready for, for a game of this magnitude with all the time that you have it off? Um, uh, yeah, it was three weeks of practices, you know, really right, right around that time. Uh, I think for us, the, the first week and a half, two weeks was, was really studying uh, as much as we could the, you know, the Alabama team and, you know, in all phases and, you know, individual matchups. Um, and, and that, uh, that week, that work was good. Our guys, uh, worked hard, prepared hard, uh, as, as we were putting in the game plan as well. Uh, and then the last week, week and a half, it was, uh, you know, really trying to polish what we were trying to do, uh, you know, make, uh, make our, make ourselves understand, uh, the game plan uh, and our players uh, to really have it honed and, and practiced, uh, make made really made it more about us the last week week and a half and uh, feel like our guys have really been hard at it and um, you know they they're moving around good the uh, ability to come down here and and you know practice outside again that was that was good and uh, and now. Uh, you know, never really say the hay's in the barn. We're still, still working and polishing, but uh, you know, feel like uh, it's time to play a football game. You, get, you have that feeling now that it's, it's time and, and uh, and have at it. From our standpoint, uh, you know, we kind of look at any bowl game or whether we're in a playoff or whatever it is that when we have a significant amount of time off, we try to not tie the the end of the season to actually the bowl game and sort of approach it like it's a one game season. Um, so our players had a couple weeks off and we practiced for a week at home, uh, took three days off for Christmas and came down here and practiced for a week. So, um, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with mindset. Uh, I think, you know, our team was a little disappointed in the way we finished the season and, um, you know, maybe didn't reach some of the goals that we had initially in terms of what we wanted to accomplish and what we wanted to do uh, as a team. Um, so this this game against a, a very, very good team uh, that has great tradition uh, is certainly an opportunity for our players to uh, sort of go out and, um, you, you know, play well against a good team. and. Um, maybe you can diminish some of the disappointments of, of the season. And that's kind of been the approach, you know, with the players. And uh, we've had good work. Our final question will be over on the right. Uh, John Alba, Spectrum Sports. Uh, the Citrus Bowl obviously means a lot to this area. And this is one of the more high-profile matchups that this area has had in some time. And with the emergence of schools like UCF, college football has grown a lot in this area. So uh, starting with Coach Harbaugh here, given your experience in Orlando, uh, what is your impression of how the sport has grown in the Orlando area, and what do you think this matchup can provide for those fans? I think it's I think it's a, a huge matchup. Um, you know, our, our players uh, you know had a tremendous time with the, with the youngsters in the area yesterday. It was it was adorable. Uh, it's great to see uh, you know, our guys and the kids interacting, and and um, you know other people that I've. You, know, you just run into uh, um, whether it's been over at Disney World and, and things like that. There seems to be a tremendous amount of excitement for the game here in town, and uh, it's gotten a lot of national exposure. I, I think it'll be a 
uh, a well-watched game. I, I would I would predict that, and uh, uh, so I think it's I think it's really good. I mean, to us, we look at it. It's, this is uh, a first-class bowl game uh, against a great opponent, and you know, that's that's pretty darn good. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go out and play our best. I guess I have a unique perspective on this because I played in 1972 Tangerine Bowl here. <laughs> Is that right? Kent State versus Freddie Solomon and the University of Tampa. So um, based on what this game has become relative to where it was then, um, I think you know this community has done a great job of supporting the game and uh, obviously uh, the organization of this bowl game has grown uh, to be something special and you know I think one of the, the the great venues in college football to have an opportunity to be a part of uh, I think Orlando itself has grown uh, you know with the bowl game and uh, the, the the Citrus Bowl folks have certainly taken advantage of that so um, I, I know that we were excited about having the opportunity to come here and play um, because we were here in I think 2010 uh, and had a great experience, and I've actually experienced and seen growth even since then uh, in terms of what this, this game does. And, and I think what they do for the community uh, is really significant for the community as well. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app, and if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.